Hello everyone. I hope future me remembers to film an intro because I'm not going to do it right now. Oh, I have some products. I'm just going to, I guess this is going to be kind of a get ready with me. Um, a lot of these things are newer products I've gotten. This isn't going to be a first impressions because I have tried all these already. But just kind of like my thoughts on some new things. So I have the Naked Heat Palette, which I'm going to be using for my eyes. Um, I have the new Urban Decay Mascara. And I have some of the Fenty Beauty products. So yeah, let's jump into it. Um, I actually did film like a first impressions with the Fenty products I purchased, but I was not feeling them at first and I didn't even want to like edit and upload that video because it was like not good how it turned out. Um, I don't know what it was. So the first time I tried the foundation from, so if you don't know, if you don't know, Rihanna released a makeup line and if you don't know, Fenty is her last name. I knew that because I like found that out one time when I was like researching her like Puma line. Anyway, but I did not know that until like this year that Fenty was her last name. Anyway, so she released released a makeup line, mostly face products, um, foundations, um, like concealer, concealers, contours, some highlighters, a powder, that kind of stuff. Um, no eyebrow, eye products, one lip gloss, um, that was it. She has, um, I saw on their Instagram in October, mid-October, they're coming out with a bunch of new stuff for her product, for her line. Um, it's like an eyeshadow palette that looks really cool. Um, some other eye products looks like, maybe some lip colors. But you've probably heard of, I don't know why I'm telling you, like, you haven't heard about this line because you've probably seen some first impressions videos and you've probably seen it all over the internet. I didn't know it was coming out till like, the night before and then I kept seeing it all over, like, Twitter and Instagram and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> and then, um, I, so I ordered the next day from Sephora's website. The big thing is that the foundation has 40 shades. That's obviously a lot. I know there are probably other brands that have... A similar amount but I would say on average most brands have uh maybe like drugstore wise probably like 10 to 15 I know sometimes more than that and sometimes less um high like Sephora type brands would probably have more like 15 20 so I'd say like 10 to 20 would be like average so 40 is a lot um obviously it's not going to be everybody's shade but you can probably find something close um or you can kind of mix shades to get your perfect shade um, I know a lot of people really like that there's a lot of good lighter colors um, for fair toned people like myself um, and darker colors because um, a lot of brands kind of lack in both of those areas so I was really excited and in my excitement I bought the absolute first shade which is shade 100 um, and this one is neutral undertones for fair skin so like the one after this was I think for warm undertones or like pinky toned. I can never keep it straight. If warm is warm undertones are for like pinky toned skin, cool, like yellow. I, I can never keep track. Whatever. And then there's probably this one, like the third one I think is also a neutral undertone. I probably could have gotten that one, but I swatched it on my hand on, on my hand at Sephora after I purchased this. And it just looks like it'd be like too dark like any of my other foundations. So I don't know. This one is very, very light. Um, the thing is, so like my face, as you can see right now, is kind of like pink and red. Um, but like my neck, and so like my chest is also kind of like pink. Okay, but my neck is literally just like white. Like <laughs> it's very light and there's like no like undertone. I mean, sometimes when I like blush, like my whole like by like chest and like neck, like I'll like turn like red. But for the most part, like when I apply foundation and like especially if I'm in like sunlight, daylighting outside, like in my car and I look in the mirror, um, the color on my face compared to the color on my neck, it is always like darker or too pink or too yellow. So even though I probably do have pink undertones, my neck doesn't really. And I don't like to like drag foundation all the way down my neck because. I just feel like I guess it's gonna get everywhere. Like I'll blend it down like my jawline, but I don't want to like cover my neck and foundation because that's just like gonna get all over clothes. I know some people do that, but I, I cannot do that. I don't have time for that. Um. Anyway, so I like to buy neutral undertone foundations because whenever I have one that's pink toned or yellow toned, it looks off. It either like if it's yellow, it makes me look kind of sick. If it's pink, it makes me look kind of like red and like bad. So for a while, I used to buy pink ones so that they match me. And then for a while I was buying yellow ones to like counteract like the redness in my face and then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to buy neutral ones. 
Okay, so the first time I tried this foundation, the day or the day after I got it, I used it in my beauty blender and I did not like, I just didn't use a primer or anything, I just applied it with the beauty blender. And it is a little bit more liquidy, so I felt like the beauty blender soaked up a lot of the foundation and it didn't really apply a lot to my face. Like I wasn't getting very good coverage, which I think beauty blenders in general, like I like how they blend your foundation, but I do think they take away from the coverage. And I think this is supposed to be like medium coverage. Um, my skin is not very good right now. I don't know if you can see here, I wanna like, this lighting is making it look better than it actually is. So um, I've just been breaking out a lot recently and I like kind of a fuller coverage look. So that, the first day I tried it, I was like, nah, not feeling it. The second day I tried it with the primer that I purchased from the collection, which is the Instant Retouch Primer. And then I also tried applying it with the brush. So I was like, well, I'm gonna try this foundation. I'm gonna try, you know, with a primer, with the brush it's supposed to be applied with, see how it is. And I didn't like it either. I don't know if it was, my skin wasn't moisturized enough. I just felt like um, it wasn't blending out well. It was kind of coming off like streaky and like, I don't wanna say chalky, but a little bit. And I was like, not a fan. And I felt like it was showing up the texture in my, like, around my nose and my pores and I was like this does not look good I hate this like I'm gonna return this then I was like I'll give it another try so next day I tried it again I didn't use the primer because I thought the primer might be kind of I don't know I feel like the primer should go well with it if they're like you know same brand formulated to work together by the way this packaging very nice it's very like heavy and that's pretty it's like nude and pink um I tried it with like a different primer that I had and I tried mixing it with my Dior Forever foundation. So this is the foundation I've been using mostly for the last few months. I do really like it. I like the coverage. It lasts a long time. It's SPF 35. Um, the thing I don't like about this is that it's way too dark for me. So this is shade 14. I think it's the second lightest one. I don't know why I didn't buy the first shade. I don't think it's like much lighter. I think it's just kind of like a different undertone. I'm not sure. I think they were like out of stock honestly. and I wanted to buy it. So I don't know if you can see the difference in these colors. Like this one is obviously a lot lighter. So I tried mixing these together um, and I applied that and I actually was starting to like it. I, was, I applied a lot of moisturizer that morning. I applied it with the brush and then used a beauty blender to blend it out. Um, and I liked it better and that's what I've been doing for the past few days to test it out and I have been liking it. So that was one of the things I kind of was thinking when I bought this foundation. I was like, well, I'll buy the lightest shade, and if it is too light, I can use it with other foundations that I like that are too dark. So kind of like to lighten them. I used to use like a white foundation from MAC. Um, Manic Panic also sells one. So I don't really like MAC, so I would suggest that one. <laughs> and this video is going to be so goddamn long. But I felt like mixing the white foundation into other foundations kind of lessen the coverage. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna be just mixing these today because that's what I've been liking to do. So um, I will try this again on its own. Um, as far as the color, I feel like it matched my neck really well. But then like, I don't know, I feel like it just makes me look really pale, which I'm fine with, but sometimes it can make you look like sick, creepy, like <laughs> unhealthy if you don't like, like, you know, do enough like contour, bronzing, highlight. So it depends. I'm, I might try, I'll try it again by itself someday, but for now I'm just gonna be mixing it with this one. Um, and I am gonna try the primer again. <laughs> kind of nervous because I feel like, I don't know why I feel like this is what like I didn't like about it, but I am gonna try it again just because I feel like I should. Um, so we'll start with that. I'm just gonna do a few pumps. The primer is supposed to smooth, diffuse pores, and extend your makeup wear. So that's like what I want is to smooth my skin, diffuse my pores, and extend my makeup wear. So it sounds like it's really good. It does feel a little tacky, but it kind of feels pretty smooth, almost like a moisturizer in my opinion. So we're just going to put it all over. I don't know, is there something where you're supposed to let the primer set into your skin or are you supposed to apply your foundation right away? I don't know, but I feel like I kind of want to wait a minute. Also because I'm cooking stuff right now. <laughs> um, and let it set in. It feels very smooth, like I like the feel of it. 
It doesn't feel like silicone-y. It doesn't feel really like liquidy wet. Like I don't like the Too Faced Hangover Primer. I do not like how that one feels or smells. Um, so I like this. It kind of reminds me of like a thicker version of the Hourglass Mineral Veil, which I do like. Anyway, my skin feels very smooth right now, so that's good. We'll see. So I'm going to take about two pumps of my Dior and then about two and a half pumps of this one. This one is definitely more runny. Okay, and then you, there you can see the, oh, <laughs> the color difference. I'm going to mix them together in my hand and then I'm going to use the brush to apply it. Um, I don't really use, like when I use brushes for foundation, it's kind of more like a buffing brush. This is more like of a flat, like, lay the foundation on, which I haven't used this kind of brush to apply foundation since I was like, in like middle school and I used like a foundation brush for my foundation. So, we'll just... So, right now, compared to my, like, if you just look at it, like compared to my cheek, it's like much less red and pink, but compared to my neck, I think it's a pretty good match. Okay, so I'm trying to blend it out a little bit with the brush, but I'm going to go in with the beauty blender. So it covered pretty well. Um, I think that's because I did have that Dior one mixed in and that one is pretty full coverage. So for my beauty blender, it is very, like, lightly dampened. Um, I squeeze it out really well and then I squeeze it out like in a paper towel. Um, and I'm just going to go over that just to make sure. I feel like brushes leave brush marks and it's like impossible to for me to apply foundation without having brush marks. I should put my hair back. This is so annoying. Okay. So it's on like everywhere but my forehead. I think it's a pretty good match. Um, obviously my chest is a little more pink. I feel like my neck is a little lighter, but let's be real, I'm never gonna, my whole body is never ever gonna match completely, so. The packaging of all this is very nice. Good job, Rihanna. Very aesthetically pleasing. I love how the little like matchsticks like magnetize together. I think that's super cool. I did not buy any of the concealers or cream contours or highlighters, honestly, because I have plenty of highlighters. Um, and none of the colors really like stood out to me as like ones I would want. I know everyone's like freaking out about the trophy wife one, the like the really gold one. That one would look like horrible on me, like I just know. So <laughs> I do not need to buy that. Um, anyway, and then I, I don't really use like cream concealers. I use kind of more like ones with like a wand, not like a stick. Um, and I use cream contour once in a while, but I have mine from Anastasia that I really like. And I just felt like I didn't need to buy a new one. I honestly didn't need to buy any of this, but, you know, I had to try it. Okay, I'm applying a little more where I think I need some more coverage. I used to never break out along my cheeks and, like, my jawline. Like, it was always my forehead, um, recently more my chin, around my, like, nose area, mouth. But, like, recently, like, my cheeks and my jawline have been, like, so bad. I don't know what it is. I think it's like because I eat like shit. <laughs> I like drink so much water every day in the hopes that like it will clear up my skin. Like I drink like a hundred ounces of water. I'm not okay. But then I eat like lots of sugar and dairy and shit that's like not good for your skin. So I should not complain. It's my own fault. I am getting a facial for the first time in like a week and a half. I'm super excited. Okay. Some Urban Decay Primer Potion on my eyelids. Now for concealer. Um, these, I used to use these forever ago and I recently just repurchased them. Um, they're the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind ooh, that's a, not the English side. Um, dark Circle Erasers. So I bought the Brightener one which is the pinky toned one and then the Fair one. Um, so they have a Brightener which is like pink toned and then a Neutralizer which is like yellow toned. Um, I kind of have more purpley blue under eye circles. You can't really see them right now. There they are. So I like the brightener one for me, just like right under my eyes. Super easy. 
And then um, this, I'm just gonna apply over that. That's the other problem with having a foundation that actually matches me that's really light. Like when I use this one by itself, like all my concealers are like not light enough to be lighter than that, like to highlight. Um, actually the Tarte Shape Tape in Fair is pretty, pretty light, but like it's still not like light enough, so. Okay, I'll apply a little bit. I would apply some here, but okay. That's good. I don't want to do too crazy today. It's Sunday. I'm going to take some Kat Von D Lock It Translucent Powder to set concealer, my eyelids. I also like to set bake right here because my frown lines crease no matter what I do, but I think this makes it less. <laughs> and then anywhere that I have like bumps that I don't want to like. I don't want to, that I really want to stay, right? I'm going to take my Anastasia Shadow Stick Foundation. This is what I use to cream contour. I'm just going to do a little, right? I always get like marks like here too where I contour. And then they look <laughs> so bad that like when you contour because they like, it's hard to conceal and then contour, you know? You know what I mean? It's worse on like right there. I actually have this like scar on my face over here that's like always been there and it like makes my contour look bad but whatever. I'm taking a little more powder to set the rest of my face, brushing away that baking. Right along the neck there. Now I'm going to take some D-Slick setting spray. I don't know if this does anything, but I use like setting spray at multiple steps in my routine. I don't know if it, yeah. And I also feel like if you hold it too close, like it can like be really wet instead of like a fine mist. And then it can kind of like make your foundation start to like speckle and like come off. So we're gonna hold it like way up here. Ah. <sighs> I'm actually going to take a little bit of my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush, Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder, which is nearing the bottom. I like this powder. Um, and just turn right the center of my face and areas where I want a little more coverage. I actually heard that putting like a colored powder, like a foundation type powder, over translucent powder can eliminate the um, flashback. So I don't know if that's true, but whatever. So this is what it looks like. I mean, you can still see, obviously, um, some spots that I have, but I'm okay with that. Honestly, if you have really nice skin, like clear skin, <laughs> you probably really like this foundation because it does look nice and natural, um, and it doesn't feel like I have my time. The only place I can feel feels weird is right here because I put all that powder there, so it feels a little drier. For contour, I'm going to take my Inglot, it's their um, Sculpting Powder in 505, and this Angled Morphe Brush. This has been like my favorite contour powder as of late for my skin tone. I feel like I should put makeup on my ears to match my face too. Okay, so maybe that's a little ridiculous. I kind of hate like pushing makeup into my hairline because I feel like it makes my hair dirty <laughs> if I don't want to wash it again, you know? But also like, gotta blend it in there otherwise it's gonna look crazy. And for blush, this is also from Inglot. Um, it is their Fusion Blush and Illuminator, and this is in shade 204. Um, this is what I've been using a lot for blush recently. I just kind of mix it all together. This is not a highlighter for me. It's like a, a shimmery blush. Next, I'm going to take this brush. This is from Rogue and Rouge. Rouge and Rogue. It's one of the two. It's They used to be called Black Magic Lashes. It's like an eyelash company. Um, I don't know when they changed their name, but I just like, yeah, whatever. I brought these, um, brushes from them. They're like, 
look like dragon tails or something, I don't know. Um, I love the like look of them and they're really soft. I'm, I don't know how I feel about them as brushes, I haven't used them very much yet, but um, they seem a little like stiff, if that makes sense. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna use this brush though. I do like this for highlight because it really just packs it on. But with some highlighters, it looks a little crazy, like too highlighty, you know. I'm gonna take Soft and Gentle from MAC. This was like a huge deal so long ago, and I like. That was like before I was into highlighter. I remember people used to talk about MAC Soft and Gentle. And then. I got it like a while ago, and I didn't really use it very much, but over the summer and recently, I've been very much into it. Yes, honey. We'll do more highlight later, don't worry. For eyebrows, I'm using my Anastasia Brow Definer in medium brown. Mine is broken. It's been broken for a while. It like keeps breaking like more and more. Anyway, I still use it and I should probably buy a new one, but it's one of those things that like I do use every day, but it's not like an exciting thing to purchase. So I'd rather buy like a new eyeshadow palette than this, you know? I honestly just kind of, oh God. I've been kind of lazy with my eyebrows recently. I really don't care. Let's get going with the eyeshadow. Um, I'm actually going to give my lashes a quick curl. I like to curl them before I do my eyeshadow because sometimes I feel like the like metal part of this like will mess up your eyeshadow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't even know what I'm doing for my eyeshadow right now, but we're just going to... We're just going to go for it. So I'm going to take Chase. So this is, again is the Naked Heat palette. I said I wasn't going to buy this. Um, I have literally had like every Naked palette, like Naked 1, 2, 3, Naked Smoky, the Naked Basics, both of them, a bunch of other Urban Decay eyeshadow palettes. At this one, I do love these kind of colors. Like this is like my kind of colors. So I was like, you know, maybe I should get it. Um, I love like reddish pink eyeshadows. I didn't really used to be much into them until like um, I got the like Venus, Lime Prime Venus palette, the Modern Renaissance, and those are like my favorite palettes. So. That's like the kind of eyeshadow I want to wear every day, these kind of shades. I know not everybody wants to wear these every day, but I do. So I'm going to take Chaser, which is this kind of like light matte tan. And I'm just going to use that to kind of just blend through the crease. Nice base shade here. Give us a little bit of crease definition. I kind of want to go for like a darker lid look. Now I'm going to take, it's called He Devil on this Kylie blending brush. I say this in like every video, but I bought these like when her high holiday collection was out. And I don't know if they still sell them, but I really like this brush. Nice and soft. Gets the job done. Then I'm gonna flip the brush this way and just kind of blend some more. So I'm gonna just... I'm gonna take Ounce, which is the highlight shade. It looks like it's matte, but there's a slight sheen to it. I actually really like this shade. I'm gonna take the shade En Fuego. En Fuego, En Fuego. I don't know. This one. On a tiny little brush. I love this brush. This is the Real Techniques shading brush. It's really good for like lower lash line. Anyway, I'm gonna... Just deepen up right along my lash line and the outer corner here. Taking the brush that comes in the palette, I'm gonna take Ember, which is this last one here, shimmery like coppery brown. And we're gonna start packing that. Ooh, that's pretty. I don't know if I've used that one yet. It's kind of right in like the lower portion of my lid, so keeping it away from my crease and the inner corner. I'm going to take Lumber, Lumbre, Lumber. It's a shimmery pink. I don't even know what kind of color that is. Anyway, we're going to apply that like to the inner part of my lid. Because I don't like that dark color all the way. And you know, I'm gonna go back and blend this out. I'm gonna take a little 
cayenne. Just because I like that name. And I like that color. I mean, it's like orangey. It's more like an orangey, pumpkin-y brown. Um, and let's go back and blend. I'm going to take a little bit of brown liner. This is my L'Oreal Voluminous Smoldering Eyeliner that I use in my waterline like every video. But let me tell you guys, this liner, because it's so big, it's so easy to line your waterline. Like I literally, I hate having to like pull on my eye. But this is just like doo -doo 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 doo 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 I do want to use some eyeliner just because I'm going to put some little lashes on. We're not doing a wing because that would ruin everything. This is the tattoo liner from Cap on D Trooper Black. I got it as a, like one of my rewards from Sephora. That's why it's a little tiny one. I got a mini size of the new Urban Decay mascara because I always buy mini sizes of mascara because I think it's a waste of money to buy the full size because you're not supposed to use them for more than three months or whatever. And who uses a full mascara in three months? Slash, if I'm trying one, I don't want to pay for the big one. Okay, so it's the Troublemaker mascara. It's like 13.7 um, times the lash volume. It's supposed to be like. I swear it said it on here. Maybe I imagined it. Oh yeah, super fat, super long, sex proof mascara. Okay, um, the packaging is gorgeous. That's half the reason why I like it. Um, so far, what I've tried of it. <laughs> It's really thick and I feel like it's not my favorite, but honestly, I feel like I'm never going to really love a mascara since having eyelash extensions because to me, every mascara looks messier than, you know, when you have eyelash extensions and they're nice and clean looking. I don't know. Whatever. I feel like there's a piece of hair, but I don't want to like rub my face to try to get it off. Do you ever get that? Okay, we need to like, oh God, there's still powder there. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whatever. Okay. I feel like once this mascara dries out a little more, I might like it better. Just because I feel like the first couple times I used it, it was like too, like, goopy for me. I'm gonna comb through. I always do this, I don't know. So I'm gonna use my, these are the Urban Lash and HBIC Babies. They're just like, they're kind of individual lashes. I like these because they're like tiny little strips of like three lashes in different lengths. So they're like individual lashes but not like individual ones where it would take like 20 years to... I also, from Urban Decay, how was that altered the, the other day? This was right in the front. It's a little liquid vice. So it comes with four of their liquid lipsticks. Oh, and of course the one that I want to use is not in here. Where is it? Oh, these are the colors. I always say, Susie, don't buy any liquid lipsticks because you hate them and you never wear them. But I was like, oh, I haven't tried Urban Decay's. I should try them. Maybe I'll like them. I always think I'm going to like them. And like, there's some that I don't mind, but after wearing them for like a few hours, they annoy me. Um, so I'm going to use the, this one, which is called Back Talk. This is a nice color. It's kind of like similar to my lip color. So I don't feel like I need to apply like a lot of it where it gets kind of like thick feeling and gross. You know, I can just apply a little bit. And when it fades, it will, if, when it does fade, I mean, it's supposed to be like waterproof, but like they always like fade like, you know, um, it's not going to look weird and patchy. So I'm going to use that one. Let me put this lash on real quick. I'm going to take a little bit of Soar by MAC and just very lightly give me a little bit of shape to follow. I'm going to take some of this primer oil from Smashbox. I don't know if this is like does anything but I like to put some on my lips sometimes I did read that since your lips don't have like oil glands or putting in oil like doesn't do anything I don't know whatever I'm all about as much moisturization as possible when it comes to my lips because I bite my lips and they get so dry I also have the the Fenty lip gloss, it's my purse downstairs though, um, the gloss bomb. I love it, how it looks. I hate the smell of it. It smells like lip smackers, gross, like watermelon chapstick that you would use when you were like three, or seven, I don't know. Okay, so I put three lashes on each like outer corner. I feel like I could keep going because like now like the inner part of my lashes look like, 
nothing but I'm gonna stop myself because I don't have a lot of time and I'm not trying to be too extra okay so I'm gonna take the liquid lipstick and just like a little bit like just kind of like dab it on I'm gonna let it dry for a second but I do want to top it with the gloss bomb just so you guys can see that I am gonna put a little more highlight on we're gonna use my Anastasia Starlight one of my faves on a fan brush how extra am I being? It's Sunday at 2 p.m. How extra can you be? Boom! Alpha change! I'm gonna take a little bit of the gloss bomb. Try not to smell it. I do like the look of this matte. I love how matte lips look, I just hate how they feel. So, I always end up... Some people like the smell of this though. Like I've heard people like, oh my god, it smells so good. I don't like it. Okay, there you go. The only Beale juice in this shirt. I know it's the wrong way, the wrong stripes, but it's cute. Bye.